if you keep your goals in front of you all the time, you get excited, you know where you're going, you know exactly what you have to do, and you focus on that, you're gonna get it. It may be a matter of time, but it's it's eventually- it, There is a time and space in between, but you will get it. Find always your north, what, what inspires you. Um, and I think if you just stick to that, be inspired. Don't allow the, the noise, right? Don't allow the noise to distract you from your own potential because at the end is what it does. It distracts you. And, and then that anxiety becomes worse, right? Because then you're feeling less of a purpose as you get older. Hi, everybody. Welcome. I'm your host, David Berg. I'm here with our executive producer and co-host, Michael Konowski. Alongside our guest of honor today is Jonathan Garcia. Jonathan is in the real estate field. He's a real estate agent and a TV show host of the show, The American Dream. And he is based, we're actually in his office here in Brickell, Florida. Jonathan, please, floor is yours. Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for, for having interest in, in having me in your podcast. Uh, where would you like me to start? Tell us a little bit about your career, okay. how you got into real estate and what we're doing in your office here in the middle of uh, Miami, Florida. Uh, all right. Well, um, I'll tell you a little background of me. I'm originally from Venezuela. I was born there and I moved to the U.S. when I was 17 uh, to do a 10 month program to learn English. That was the idea. So my parents drove me to St. Petersburg, Florida and dropped me off to, with the American family that was providing the housing while I would go to school, English school every day. And they dropped me off, they left, and then I had to figure it out on my own. <laughs> <laughs> so break that so, down for us a little bit. You, you say an American family. Yeah. What is that? Are, are there families that are that volunteer to do this? What? And no, they, yeah. they, we pay, there was, a, there was, okay. you know, um, there was a monthly payment for them because, you know, they're feeding me right. and, you know, giving me housing. Plus it would take me to the, to the school back and forth, et cetera. And they sign up for it. So there's a lot of families that, that do that because they want to have these boring kids and to have the whole experience. So really? it, it, we became super close, um, of course, living with them and their, their kids for 10 okay. months. Uh, but when, when you do it that way, let's just say that in by three months, you're speaking English real quick. <laughs> right, because everybody in the house, you have to, right? So it's the right way to do it. Um, now, fast forward, then I was fortunate enough to be able to stay and go to college here. So I never really went back home. Uh, so from that English uh, program, I went right into community college. 2001, I transferred to FIU here in Miami to finish my finance and international business degree. Okay. So I moved to Miami in 2001 to FIU to finish my degree. Uh, but after that, I uh, went into fi finance. At the time, Wachovia, which was then sold to, I think, Bank of America or Chase when the 2008 crisis happened. But at the time, uh, I did a year and a half there. And I, wanted, I always wanted to get my master's degree. So again, thanks to my parents, so, you know, I was able to stop the work and go back to school for two years and got my master's in finance then. After that, I through uh my first like real real job was right after my master's it was right here actually across the street it's really? ironic it's 701 brickle okay was my my corporate job office in the private banking industry so uh we were doing i was doing asset management mm -hmm. for about five and a half years five and a half years five and a half years i had my series seven license my right. series 66 i was doing great you know but I was not loving what I was doing. And as soon as I turned 30, I realized that I needed, I needed to make a change because I refused to be one of those people that are in the late forties or fifties to realize they hated their career. They hated that every day. And I didn't want to be that person. So never saw myself as a salesperson ever. I always thought that my job would be somewhere in the management office desk sort of corporate job sure but i did some soul searching and my friends were the ones who pushed me to real estate really two friends of mine were they already in the field yes one of them is is a very successful but they're both extremely successful but one of them is uh, a hotelier and um developer in maine in kennebunkport up okay. there and 
then my friends here in Miami, he's now a really well-known commercial developer. So he was starting then, but he always knew where he was going. So he's like, you, you, him and his wife, and his wife yeah. it'd be great, just get the license. <laughs> so I got the license while still working at the bank. Right. And um, 2013, February 2013 is when I decided to make the switch. Were you yeah. afraid when you initially switched? Extremely. Yeah. Extremely afraid. I had no idea what I was doing. I, I, you know, um, real estate agent, they don't, they don't teach you how to sell. They don't teach you anything when you're getting the license. Right. Most brokers, I mean, some brokers, they do offer that sort of like a one-on-one, what you need to do, a training, sure. right? But, but a lot of them don't. And I, I was able, because of one of them, uh, I was able to immediately join a huge team. The team. They're still the biggest team in the country. It's here in Miami Beach. And that's where you work today? And no. No. I was, they got me a job with them. Okay. So I was very lucky because immediately I was learning with the best. And then when you came to Sotheby's, were you forced to source your own deals entirely? or Always. Always. Oh. So how does so run me through how that looks like if if somebody's getting into real estate what is what does the day to day look like if you choose to go on your own and absolutely yeah so um but you have to find clients right the good news is that when you're first starting I mean hopefully you have a good supporting system right family and friends and I had that here so even though they knew I didn't know what I was doing right they still were like okay we'll give you a little business here. Um, but you, on, when you're on your own in real estate, you, you really need to know you have to have a mentor or some sort of coach or guidance because you need to know what it is you need to do to find the business. Right. right. And as, as you know, David, in sales, it's about relationships, right. And generating those, those and nurturing those relationships, but also you have to make new ones. Right. And so there's different methods. Like for instance, my regular schedule is I'm always in my office by 8.30. I have um, I have a role play partner, every, uh, that I, a call that I we speak every morning at 8.30 and okay. it changes every week because we, I'm part of a group. And then we practice how to speak on the phone. Every morning? Every morning, 8.30. And then by 9.15, 9.20, uh, I start making my calls. So in some of those calls are my past clients, current clients, sure. um, it's what we call a sphere of influence. So people that know you in different industries as you, you, and the goal is to have free estate conversation mm -hmm. because everybody, you know, there's somebody always buying or selling real estate. You need to, my job is to find people to be in front of those two. Right. So, um, all my mornings are mainly focused on making calls, making connections, talking to past clients. Um, and then, and then my afternoons are more flexible. So sometimes we do showings, uh, you know, and then, or sometimes it's to go meet a new client. Right. And so that's, you know, sort of like in a nutshell what it is. Sure. When you're doing those calls in the morning at this point in your career, are any of those calls complete cold calls to people? Yes. They are hundred percent, even to this day. To this day, wow! And is there a fear associated with it still, or at this? Point? I just a lot of fears I've had to. I'm still yeah. working on them. I'm okay. not gonna say I am fully cured because right. I'm not. Uh, and, you know, and I don't know why. It's, it's seriously when I yeah. think about it. Like you said, it's, it used to be fear of rejection, right? Right. But, but the hell, they don't know you. Exactly. You don't know them. So you need. At the end of the day, this is me talking to myself. By yeah. the way, every morning. <laughs> Because at the end of the day is my, my affirmation, my goal every morning is to connect with people that need my service. Right. You're adding value to them. You're not taking from Right. Exactly. So, but even though you know that sometimes you look at the phone, you're like, oh man, because being rejected is not fun. Right? right. But at the same time, I have made really great clients just by making a phone call. And if, you know, when you have that in your mind that. You know, your, your intention, right? My intention is to help people, to meet those people that need my help, my service, what I can provide to them, the value, right? Sure. And then I've, that's when the magic happens. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I think fear is a big thing 
for many different people in every and in any industry you're in, right? Whether you're cold calling, whether you're meeting somebody for the first time, what what do you use in your life to overcome fear? Not just in business, but in your personal life and, and throughout your journey. What what are some tools that you use? Oh man, you have a couple of hours. <laughs> we have a long list of things to go through, right? Well, you know, I now that I'm 42, of course, and having made big changes in my life from leaving my country right now to come here not speaking the language right to fast forward uh, and then make the change to change completely the career i studied for that i just money invested all of that to then so i feel like everybody goes through fear different fears in different stages of their lives you know i look back and sometimes i look back on the things that i overcame so easily mm -hmm. I look back I'm like but you moved here when I was 17 and go on to buy it, right. you know then I'm like can I tap into that again <laughs> exactly where's that we like, like oh so easily right how did that go so easily and sometimes I find myself and like what's wrong with you right yeah. so and how do I um, you know if being conscious of 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 what's happening here what's happening in your head because at the end I've learned and especially through my Kabbalah studies more, more importantly is we allow this to run too long mm. and it's basically on automatic so it's, it's getting control of the thoughts and the things that I tell myself how do you do that I meditate okay meditate um, that has helped me a lot I found meditation. Um, I follow the work of Joe Dispenza. I don't sure. know if you heard of him. Yep. So, um, but meditation overall, I, I it has helped me tremendously. So, if somebody doesn't have access to whether it's a cell phone or internet, how how can they meditate without the guide of a you know a professional? Sure. Well, I've always done um, guided meditation. Uh, it helps me, although. I have tried, and it also works to just sit there silently. Mm. And I know it sounds crazy, and it's, it's not. It, most people think I can never do that, That's but right. yes, you can. Because what I've learned is, and it's nice to sit there quietly. You know, you get messages. You, you, you do. You you sort of like download information, but you have to be intentional about it, right? And the most the hardest thing for any human being is to be able to control your mind and your thoughts and quiet down. Completely. Quiet down, right? But what I've learned is also that your mind and your thoughts, it, it's just like brushing your teeth. It's just like going to the gym. You have to practice, 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 practice. So you get to a point, luckily right now, I've meditated for probably four years. Okay. I could easily like sit silent and go into meditative within five to ten minutes. Some days yeah. are a little harder, but yeah. No how chaotic your day was. No matter how chaotic, you can sit at five minutes for meditation. But the the struggle is making that time, especially mm -hmm. when things are right. When you had a bad day, right. So it's the last thing you want to do. It's the but. last thing you want to do, but it's the one thing that you need the most. So I've had, I can tell you, like I've had times where I'm having one of those days and, and then from here I go to a meeting or from an event and there has been times where I cancel that because I need to go home, I need to be in bed early and I need to meditate. I need to take time for me. Wow. So you're, it's not hard for you to prioritize yourself. It's, it's not easy because, you know, clients are obviously, but if it's something that I could easily postpone without making an effect, negative effect on anything I right. have done it because I find the value I, I, I see the value in it for me how it helps me completely because in sales as you know we really don't have I mean you're a sales manager but I don't have anybody patting me in the back right telling me hey go to the office Where no I have a coach it's all you it's your, you're starting your day you're ending your day you're creating your correct day. I, I create my day. I literally do. So I have to be very focused. And I always say that my day starts the night before mm. because I also get up early in the morning. So I can't be going to bed at 11, 1130 after TV 
binge like you know and then pretend to be okay at 5 30 when the alarm goes off to go to the gym right you, you can't you just you can't. start your day at 5 30 every day without fail I assuming the well, weekend the weekend you let yourself yeah weekends yeah. yeah but most most of my weekdays yeah. I, yeah for me it's very important to check in with jonathan mm. how's jonathan doing like you have you have these like self conversation oh, i have yeah I yeah Really, and I do. And who answers? Like, is it a, who answers? <laughs> I was like, that's sometimes me. Yeah. Sometimes, yeah. So it's, it's two different voices, and then yeah, yeah, yeah it is. Yeah. It is. I talk to myself all the time. Yeah, that's and sometimes fantastic. out loud. Really? Yeah. Especially on the the having a rough day, <laughs> right? But but yeah, I, I it's something. Uh, um, I, I just I think it's through my spiritual studies as well that. You know, with the whole idea of controlling your thoughts, controlling what's go in your mind also, that's another big thing, David, that I don't watch the news. Right. Zero. I'm the last person to, to find out about a tragedy or wow. something. The only things that I, I allow my phone to pop up is economic news, truthfully. Whether the market, how the market is doing, the Fed, um, you know, a quarterly results, GDP, sure. CPI, things like that. Things that actually matter to me. Because the rest, honestly, and I don't have control over it. And, and it, those things, you know, if you, it, it all, you have to filter what goes in, the information that goes in. It's extremely important. Again, as a salesperson, we have to be always positive. Right. We, we, you know, I don't have anybody cheering me on. I don't have, I have to shield myself from everything so I can perform at my best. Completely. And I perform my best when I'm positive, energetic, in a good mood, right? So I block the news for sure. And and on my free time, I'm not, I'm not a big TV like watching person. So I go for a run even if I went to the gym in the morning because right. I, do, I, I do CrossFit in the mornings, but sometimes I just go to the beach in the afternoon if when there is sun out run right. out i think a lot of people feel probably the same way like you're mentioning oh that fun is really being with yourself and really simple things but people feel the expectation to whether it's go out and and drink with their friends especially in the younger generation is like this feeling that if you're not with everybody and doing all these things all the time yeah then you're missing out you're missing out right which is like a big big right fomo as they call it so how do you how do you avoid that feeling of caring because i know it's very prevalent in this generation and really focusing on inner peace. I would say because I was one of those kids, mm -hmm. right? When I was in college and um, in my early 20s. and um, But I've always been someone that has, has been able to be on my own. Like it's okay if I'm on my own. I feel like with so much... First of all, we, don't, we didn't have social media when I was 20 in my early 20s. Um, and I feel that... A really important thing that I see in the, in the younger generation is that need to know ev who everybody that you follow, what mm -hmm. they're doing, and then by definition, it's going to create you know a, a lack if if what you see you don't have or what they're doing you're not doing or there's no way you could do that. It, so then you know it messes up with your head, right? Again, I'm also not a big social media person. Yeah, I was going to ask you. You say you don't watch the news. I know that social media can have a negative effect on people as well. I don't. Do you, do you, how, how much time would you say you spend on social media scrolling? Or I know you have a TV show. We'll talk about that too. But, yeah, um, yeah. Very little. Very little. My friends know that I'm the last one to probably answer a text message when you send it to me on Instagram. Really? Yeah. I, I might see a notification, but my days would go and I don't even go in. Or sometimes I go, but when I go, I don't even go to the messages. And I fall into it too sometimes is that there's like five seconds whether you're running you're waiting at a red light exactly whether you're that's me you're waiting in line for food that's right that's the only time that's the only times right but th but that's a lot of time i'm realizing for myself like every time i'm at a red light in traffic every time i'm walking and i'm at a red light anytime i'm at a restaurant waiting okay for food. so i'm less than you okay yeah <laughs> <laughs> so how how do you what do you do in those in those 30 seconds because your mind's racing. I think that's why we go to the phone. Oh, we, might say, we want our mind to calm down. So we try to scroll. And get, right. You know? So for me, of course, like I have emails. I have right. calls to make. Uh, one thing that I, I do do a lot, again, talk about filtering the information where it goes in. Sometimes I just, I, I do love listening to an audiobook all the time. Right. Or a Kabbalah class. 
Like I know, you know, depending on the time of the week, it's like either the portion, I need to hear the message or sometimes I just need to hear something positive, you know? Sure. Um, so it, I mix it up, but I'm rarely, rarely, you know, I try to stay and allow, I filter the information that goes in my head as much as possible. So I purposely will play an audiobook that I'm listening to that is, is good or, you know, a Kabbalah class, a, a message from somebody, something, something, that, something of that sort. Right. What, what you mentioned audiobooks and the Kabbalah courses, what audiobooks are you listening to now? And then what course are you listening to? Yeah. So one of my biggest, uh, I love, I love things that talk about self, um, I don't want to get self-help because self-help has a very bad, not like a pity. Yeah, it it's, but I like, I like books that are, that empower you, okay. right? They give you good information, researches and, and human behavior, especially in the field of success sure. in overcoming your own self or, um, like atomic habits, an incredible book and it's short, but it's wow. It makes you think so much of, of how you manage your time during the day and how do you, you can improve. But one of the, my, my favorite guys in the world is Earl Nightingale from the 1930s, 40s. Yeah. All his life, he spent studying human behavior and why is it that only a few people are successful and the rest are not right. So I re, re I read like lead the field. Um, I'm a Gemini, so I'm always, my sister's a Gemini too. She's the most, she reads a lot. Yeah. She's extremely creative and extreme. And she just, she needs information and she loves. I need yeah. information. I need information. If you spend the time to think like what it is that David wants to do, what is it Jonathan wants to do, and then you allow the mind to do its work, then that's what, that's why most, most successful people get to where they are because they know where they're going. Mm -hmm. They have goals. So one of his biggest emphasis is having goals. You have to have goals. It sounds like a paradox though, because we, we spoke before and you mentioned where everybody's overthinking. That's, that's like the biggest problem in today's generation. So is it that we're thinking about the wrong, the wrong thing? Things. So that's, that's the key. You got it, man. So you just can't, the mind's running. The money is running, but what are Wait, you really thinking? What are you really thinking? We're thinking about all the time. What am I going to do at 2 p.m.? What am I going to do at 4 p.m.? What, what about this text, this email, this phone? Nothing important, right? There's no substance there. We become what we think about. That's it. As simple as it sounds. So imagine if you, it's training, right? Because we're not born with it. Some people are, but most of us are not. Uh, but if you, keep your goals in front of you all the time. You get excited. You know where you're going. You know exactly what you have to do. And you focus on that. You're going to get it. It may be a matter of time, but it's, it's eventually. It, there is a time and space in between, right. but you will get it. Boat, right? And it's in the harbor. And the boat could start going, starts the engine, starts going. But if the boat doesn't know where it's going, it's a matter of time. It's going to end up in a shore or crash somewhere. Right. Correct? Now, if you put the coordinates and exactly where to go, you, you're going to be sure that boat is going to reach no its destination. What. That's our mind. So, um, that, see, those sort of stuff like inspire me, you right. know, because then it makes me think, well, what am I thinking? Right. And we're so limited in our thoughts, right? And we're so and we're limited in our thoughts, right? And then the fears also come in because exactly. it's all mixed, right? Then the fears, and then they try to block those big desires that you have for it. Right the big picture and then it the starts sabotage, but then that's where the spirituality comes in and tells you, or Kabbalah comes in for me and tells me, you can be anything you want, right? Sky's the limit. So it's sort of like a ball mixing it all in, right? Trying to get the perfect. Completely. Outcome. Completely. I think that there's so much information out there, right? There's a, more than ever, more than ever, which is beneficial, but also is harmful in certain ways because like we said, most people are overthinkers. So receiving all this additional information, it's like paralyzing. You're like, well, if I do this, I'm successful. And if I do this, I'm successful. And then it's just, and then you do nothing. And you don't know exactly. Right? You're pulled in different ways. That too, that happens. Right. Even as a realtor, like it's a realtor, like they know you're a realtor because of the stuff that you put in YouTube, right? Sure. So then like everybody has a magic formula, how to become a successful real estate agent. But no one really goes to basics. Right. So in the, you were saying, this one tells you this, this one, and then you're 
you just, at the end, then you're going all directions, but not one, but not one, exactly. And the same thing goes to, you know, self improvement or this or even spirituality, yeah. even spirituality. So, uh, yeah, you know, uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza says something really powerful. He says it almost in every single interview, and he's done an incredible job in putting the effect of meditation, what happens in your body physically, how your body changes. I mean, everything changes in your body physically, but how you also can connect to the divine, right? To the upper world, we call it, right? To access somewhere above this, this reality where everything exists, right? right? So, but he puts it in such a wonderful way, but he always says, we live in age and time where there's so much information available to us that ignorance is no longer acceptable. Mm. But you have to want to look for that right information. You have to want it. It's there, just as like everything else. Right. But you have to, and that's, that's one thing I would tell like younger people is be very cautious on what you allow in because it's it's basically stealing your own energy, stealing your your own, even your own potential. So, you know, I didn't have social media growing up, but right. I I see kids younger than me, and th it's a little sad. Because it's very sad, it's yeah. yeah. But no one is telling them stop, like filter that your information, right. focus on the things that you want to accomplish, and you know when you're in early twenties. What you want to accomplish is so vast, right? But you don't, you don't take it one day at a time. Exactly. But most importantly, filter the information you allow in. And that's a huge, that's a huge, it's huge. Point. Because like you said, there's just so much the hardest thing these days for these kids. Right. Because they don't know, there's also no guidance. There's no, no there's guidance. Calling them what's right, what's wrong. It's just overflow, overflow, of flow of information. And you become addicted to that information. Exactly. To that flow of information, and it's to the point, it's it's a it's a rabbit hole, and you just you know, at what point are you going to wake up and realize that you have wasted all that time? Right, right. Usually, it's unfortunately fifteen twenty years have to go by before that there's like a you know something bad happens or you or and how or yeah. how negatively is is has been influencing that person whose potential is there, but that potential is, is being diverted. Exactly. And that's, I think that's why there's so much anxiety. Correct. So much depression. Because depression. Because mental, all this, mental illness. illness. Mental illness. It's the highest it's ever been. Suicide rates among young people. On the teenagers, and it's, it's so sad. And at the same time, there is great information and help and, and good stuff out there. But again, it all, everything comes down to choosing. You have to choose. You have to know that you can. Right. People don't tell you, but you have to know that you always can choose. Always. And I think you're a perfect example of that because if somebody else has the same situation as you and they didn't speak the language, you moved here at 17 years old, you just said, I'm going to figure it out. Yeah. You learn the language, you, you, know, you became an investment banker, now you're in real estate. And so many, I'm sure some people have advantages and some people have disadvantages. But like you said, your case in point, if you have a desire to do something, Correct. It can be done. Right? It's just done. A, so. You you will get it if you focus. You know you know where you're going. You know what you want, and you know what you need. What it is you need to do. Right. You will get it. You will get it. And that's one of the many things that I love about Kabbalah as as my spiritual um, path is is. Um, I don't think, that, I mean, I don't really know any, a, a lot of other spiritual doctrines or anything like that, but I don't think there is one that constantly reminds you, constantly reminds you how powerful and limitless each one of us are and how individually we came here for a reason. And basically, you know, the world is, is your field of diamonds. You just have to... I like that reference. World is your field of diamonds. That was from Errol Nightingale. Really? Yeah. And in all of us in individually, I've learned through him that in Kabbalah that we all have a whole field of diamond in front of us. But we have to focus. We have to have goals. We have to take the time. Right. 
to identify because sometimes it's right in front of us, but you run right over it, right? Complete, or you trip over it. Or you start oh, your trip. Right? Yeah, or you yeah. trip. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we've spoken a little bit about your career and your, your journey to getting there. Tell us a little about your TV show. So share with us. Yeah, so it was an incredible opportunity that came to me last year because a friend, it was by um, invitation. Okay. And the show is called The American Dream and is, is basically all over the United States, uh, but it focuses on the local markets. And it's a very different show because it's not a reality show. It's not a scripted show. It's designed to showcase lifestyle, cultures, good people of these local markets. Sure. And they're basically done by real estate agents. So because we are technically our local experts, right? Right. So uh, the opportunity came and I was chosen to be one of the five agents um, to be part of the show. And it's been a blast. Uh, I have to come up with the content. Oh, uh, really? There's no... So you're scripting the whole thing, everything I have to make. Wow. I have to make the... The local connections have to, you know, I featured um, restaurants or galleries, um, it, you know, I have to come up with, with it and I have to make the connections, explain what it is, get people on board, have, you know, all that fun stuff. And it is almost a year. We've done about six episodes now and it's, it's been great. It's been fun. At first it was uh, a little, you know, uneasy to get in front of a camera sure. but now my now you're just, yeah when you, when you, <laughs> and what yeah. did you for this today you yeah. i mean you look extremely not for now so um <laughs> it's been great it's been great and it's a, it's been a great way to not only showcase miami because for me it's like i love i truly love where i live right i really really love where i live so for me to sell miami is easy because i really you actually i love really it. love it right. i really do it's a magical place. Uh, it's not perfect, right? But this has allowed me to showcase different areas of town, uh, people, um, history. I'm a big history guy, so I like that's another geek side of me. Okay, it's the Gemini. It's the, the information. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's the information. Yeah. So for me to to expose people, like Miami, has you know the first airport here was a water airport, basically the Pan Am. Uh, in the 1930s or 40s, they used to take off and land from Coconut Grove. Really? Yes. It's incredible. I didn't know that. So yeah. Miami, so I don't want to go off, you know, but right. the city okay. hall of okay. Miami, yeah, uh, the city of Miami hall, city hall, that was the hangar for the Pan Am, the very first airport in Miami. Wow. That's right. So those little snippets are given throughout the show. The show. Where can we watch the show? So uh, it airs once a month, okay. uh, locally in the local cable channel, but once it airs, um, through Apple TV, uh, Amazon Fire Stick, and Roku. Yeah. Uh, you can look for the American Dream okay. within those apps, and then you access them through there. Amazing. Okay. Or YouTube as well, or you can go to my Instagram. I post mine there. Okay. What's your Instagram handle? We'll we'll put it at the link at the bottom. It's JG Selling Miami. JG at JG Selling Miami. JG Selling Miami. Yeah. Okay. The whole point is, if you don't know Miami, um, you know. By watching this, now you know where to go when you come here. Right. right. Fantastic. I'll definitely check it out. Yeah. We ask this question towards the end of every episode, and the question is, for any 20 to 30-year-old who's early on in their career, feels they don't have guidance, is struggling to find purpose, what is like the one key thing that you leave them with to seek purpose, to have more understanding in their life? Well, seek purpose is such a big thing, right? Sure. I mean, I think, um, I think through, through all my different stages of my life, I've always been trying to seek something, right? Um, and then you, you think you reach something and then, and then you just keep, it turns out it was and it's something more. Um, but I would say is don't rush to, don't rush to, don't stress yourself too much. Take your time and, and live, really live every stage of your life, whatever that is. If you're in college, enjoy your college. Like life will happen on its own. Um, have good mentors, have good people in your life. Make sure you have good people in your life. Have always somebody that you look up to, whether 
is a family member, a friend, in, a, in any area. It could be, I just admire that person, you know, uh, the way he or she is, the way they treat people. Or if it's in your career, um, have somebody you look up to. It could be, you know, it could be somebody from t in TV or somebody a celebrity. It doesn't matter. There's some amazing people out there. Find always your north. What what inspires you? Um, and I think if you just stick to that, be inspired. Don't allow the the noise, right? Don't allow the noise to distract you from your own potential, because at the end is what it does. It distracts you. And, and then that anxiety becomes worse, right? Because right. then you're feeling less of a purpose as you get older. Exactly. But um, be inspired, um, cancel the noise, and live, live every single stage that you're I can tell you, I'm 42, and boy, did I party. I'm not saying yeah. go out and party, but but, but little, I have lived. I have lived. You know, I'm not saying it's bad if you're 42 and going out. And, you know, yeah, but that's what makes you happy, right? That I guess that's okay. But yeah. it's a point where come on, it's like a little right. much. Uh, but yeah. but I my point is I I lived that. I lived my 20s. I lived my 30s, and I am. My point is. When you do that, you are so content in every stage that you are. Right. So you're not looking for anything else, but you're here. You're present. You don't feel like you missed out on anything. No, exactly. And, and the more you do that to yourself, especially when you're younger, the better life you're going to have. They have totally agree. I can you know. agree. Jonathan, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on. Thank you for having me, man. Thank, Thank you. you. We're going to take two questions from our, from our audience. All right, so we have now two amazing questions um, from different teenagers around the world. They wanted to ask you, Jonathan. So the first question is from Alfonso from Mexico. Okay. He's 18 years old right now, and he just left high school. He's getting to start his college year. He's a freshman right now. He asks, how do you, f how do you choose your friends? He's struggling right now with choosing his environment and positive people around him. So what type of advice would you give him to choose the right people, when, especially in a new place like, a, like college? Absolutely. I, that's a great question, you know. And when I look back, I've always been fortunate to have good people in my life. Um, maybe it's a merit, you know. Um, but I think it comes down to, you know, Alfonso, is, is knowing your own values, right? So what what positive means for you because for me it could be very different than to you okay. so i would say figure out what 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 you value you know um i can tell you i always valued people that are good heart that care for others that uh, you know i always i hated the bullies so i hate the bullies though right? yeah, oh, yeah and and i was bullied but but at the same time I knew I, you know, I knew my values, so that helped me attract the people, the same people that I, that I wanted to be with. But, but I think the key is to first to know what it is that you want, what it is that you want to attract, and then the rest will unfollow. I think. Our second question from a very special student. Her name is Lea. She's from Spain, from Madrid. Um, the question she asked was very, very interesting. Um, she's struggling a lot with confidence. Um, she's familiar. <laughs> well, I think all? all of us are aren't we right? all? Yeah. <laughs> and she has a lot of social anxiety when she gets to new places or gets to know new people. It's she. She expressed to me on the phone that she just just to just to say hello is like a whole jump. So, um, I guess what type of advice? Maybe a kabbalistic teaching that you know. Hundred percent. A teenager today or somebody in their early or mid 20s someone who's also in the college or even anybody watching what helps you or what do you think could help them to boost their confidence well we touched upon this earlier um and it's truly through the kabbalah wisdom that i've have i myself um without knowing this and then of course you start studying and then that's the beautiful thing about kabbalah is it's all about you. You start to get to know you 
and then you start understanding yourself. Because I can tell you before Kabbalah, I had no idea who I was. I thought I knew. I thought I knew. But then you start looking in. And then you start finding things about yourself. And then and then that's when the true transformation happens. So I would say, because I've been there, um, for her is um, everything comes down to self-love, self-acceptance, loving yourself, accepting yourself, knowing you're special, knowing that you don't need anyone's recognition or anyone's approval for you to feel good about yourself. Usually, in, you know, it's just like right now, it's, again, with social media and stuff, all these kids are comparing, this, kids and adults, it's a full spectrum. Yeah. It's this comparison thing. Mm. And sometimes what you see is not even real. So it's, yeah. so it's, I would say, you know, really get to know yourself and, and be, be comfortable with you. Mm. Because usually that happens when, when you're around, it's maybe you are not comfortable with yourself. And then that's a projection outside. Right? I, I was there. Um, but it all comes out to self-love. Can I have a follow-up question to that? Because I think yeah. it's super powerful what you're sharing. What do you think is the first step somebody could take this week to start to accept themselves or to love themselves? Right. Journal. Journaling, okay. Journal. Sure. Let those feelings out, right. whatever that is. Right. And make sure you write positive things about yourself too because I've been there myself. What happens is you'll be surprised sometimes how not easy is to write positively about yourself. <laughs>